Baliog Pamali relies on something called a flexion moment imparted to the neck to do damage. An average man's neck can withstand about a 140 foot pound flexion moment. Beyond that, soft tissue and even vertebrae can be crushed. By bringing your weight down fast, this move could easily deliver twice that amount of force. And it wouldn't just end a fight, it could leave your By bending the elbow across the fulcrum of your hips, you're subjecting the weak joint to the leverage of two strong forces. The pull of your thighs on his shoulder and your hands on his wrists. As little as 1,000 pounds of force can be enough to destroy the elbow. The leverage of the armbar can supply much more than that. You use the strength of your legs to maintain your dominant position while you secure the choke. Just a few pounds of pressure on the collar of his gi is enough to reduce the blood flow to the brain to a trickle and end the match. Hold this move for 10 seconds and the fighter will black out. Hold it just a bit longer and he's dead. The sacrifice throw is a simple lesson in conservation of energy. The stronger the opponent attacks, the further he gets thrown. It works like a catapult, where your opponent's momentum supplies the counterweight. The faster he's going, the further he's going to fly, and the harder he's going to land. The throw works just like a crowbar, where your leg is the lever and your hip is the fulcrum. The trick is positioning your body in just the right place. If you're just an inch off the placement of your thigh and hip, the amount of energy needed to throw an opponent can more than double. But performed correctly, Uchimata requires almost no energy, yet it can deliver up to 5,000 pounds of force. If it weren't for the mat, a throw like Uchimata would be enough to cause serious injury or even paralysis. Because it swings through such a wide arc, the wrist is moving at speeds of up to 43 miles per hour. And since the radius doesn't deflect or compress nearly as much as a fist, it can deliver a staggering blow. Like being hit with an axe handle or a baseball bat. To demonstrate the power of the Kote Uchi, Shinjo Sensei did something incredible. I'm gonna go over there. Don't do that to me, please. Look at that. That's crazy. You yeah, should have felt impressive. the power of his hit. Just holding it. I mean, I've held on to 350 pound men in football, and I could barely hold the bat when his wrist came through there. It came through with such power and force and just shattered this thing like a toothpick. Unbelievable. In a fight, this move could easily generate enough force to crush the soft tissue of an but the key is rotating your fist 180 degrees right before it strikes the intended target. The twisting snap of the arm maximizes the speed of the punch and magnifies the force of the blow by concentrating the impact on the first two knuckles of your hand. Done correctly, it can deliver as much energy as a bowling ball dropped from the top of a house, more than enough to cause soft tissue damage or break a rib. The block works by taking the opponent's blow at an angle which deflects the energy of the blow away from the vulnerable torso. The harder you block, the further his blow will be deflected, and the more open he'll be to a counter strike. Because the area of impact is focused on a small part of the foot, it magnifies the force of the blow, making it capable of dropping 1,000 pounds of force on your head. It's like getting whacked in the head with a Louisville slugger. The kick's power comes from the snap of the knee. The snap is created when the quadricep, the largest muscle in the body, contracts and pulls the tendon connecting to the foot over the knee. Using the knee as a pulley, the strength of the quad is enough to accelerate your foot to speeds close to 30 miles per hour.